I stared at the horrors in my mother's basement as I realized the truth. She was a total psychopath. I had to get out of here. I should have never been here, and I wouldn't have been if it hadn't been for that day, the day I found out I was adopted. The revelation just came out of nowhere. I was 13 years old, running around in my house when I heard my parents arguing. They were fighting about when was the right time to tell me I was adopted, that I wasn't really their baby. This discovery threw me for a loop. I couldn't tell my parents I knew the truth, but at the same time, I felt irritated and angry at them, no matter what they said or did. After many arguments, I became distant at home and school, slowly losing my friends and pushing my family away. I just couldn't stop thinking about my real parents. I knew it was time to find them. One night when my parents went out for dinner, I snuck into their room and found my adoption papers. There was a photo of my real mother in the file. Her name was Mary. She'd given me up for adoption 15 years ago. I started searching for her on the internet, and I found a Mary who looked exactly like the woman in the picture. Wait, what? She lived in my city. Her address was only five miles away. I couldn't believe my real mom was this close. I felt even angrier at my parents. They probably knew it. The liars. The next day after school, I rushed straight to the address I'd found. I reached a crazy looking place with weird objects lined up inside the window. A large crystal ball sign read, Mary's fortune telling. Fortune telling? Great, my real mom's a cook. I was skeptical and curious as I stepped inside the strange shop. There was one table in the middle of the shop, and two people were sitting at it. I recognized Mary instantly. I can see your question, Chris, Mary said to the man across from her. You want to know if your business venture will succeed. I've done everything right this time. I've prepared everything, Chris said. I just need to know. What do the planets say? I sat down by the waiting area to watch the session. Mary closed her eyes and took a deep breath. She went on to tell him that she sensed a bad aura around his business, and it would be better for him to shut it down till the planets aligned in his favor. That sounds so lame, I thought to myself. But the guy was totally buying it. He looked really disappointed and said this project was his only dream. Mary just waved him away and said the session was over. He had to come again next month. He left. And that's when she noticed me. A hundred dollars for the session, cash payments only, please, she said. I didn't know how to say it, so I simply blurted out the truth. I'm not here for a reading. I'm your daughter. You gave me up for adoption 15 years ago. For a few seconds, her face froze in shock. With all her abilities to see into the future, she clearly hadn't seen this coming. She recovered soon enough, smiled, and pulled me into a hug. I couldn't believe it. I was hugging my real mother. We sat down and I demanded that she tell me everything about herself and why she had given me up. Looking ashamed, Mary said she was very young and poor when she had me, and she wouldn't have been able to give me a good life. She told me she had a true connection with the planets and spirits. That's why she became a fortune teller. I was rather doubtful about her powers, so she decided to do a reading for me. You're my daughter, so this one's on me, she said, winking at me. I had to admit she was pretty good. She knew just by looking at my palm that my parents hadn't told me the truth about my birth. She knew that I'd been depressed and I had no friends at school. She knew my grades were falling. I wanted to know more, but another client came in and Mary had to excuse herself. She said she was really busy these days with back-to-back -back sessions. That's when I got an idea. I could work here. That way I could get to know her better. She agreed. Now that I have gotten to know her better, I wish I hadn't. That week, I began to intern at Mary's. As we bonded daily and I felt happier, I stopped being irritable and began to joke around with people at school. I told them about my fortune-telling mom to seem cool and interesting. Allie, the head cheerleader, and Brandon, a football player, asked me to get them a session with Mary. I happily agreed because I really wanted to get in with the popular kids. This was my chance. A gang of cheerleaders and football players joined me as I went to Mary's shop that day. Everyone was excited to hear Allie and Brandon's future. Mary was very pleased to see new clients and began the first session right away with Allie. Allie wanted to know if she would win the upcoming fashion contest in school. No, Mary replied after reading her cards. The signs aren't in your favor. Allie was upset, but Mary refused to change her answer. Then it was Brandon's turn. He nervously asked Mary if his team would win the football game on Friday. Yes, you will win. Brandon was delighted by her reading and began to ask her more questions. Many other kids got their readings done and it was night by the time they all left. Mary told me to go home and said she'd leave later. When I packed up my bag and looked back, 
Mary was no longer in the shop. I looked around, but I couldn't find her. Was this one of her powers? News of Mary's abilities spread around school. It was all everyone was talking about when the day of the fashion contest came. The contest began, and one by one, girls started to walk on the stage in high heels and dresses, smiling and waving to the crowd. Allie walked in with confidence. She'd barely taken four steps across the platform when her heel twisted and she came crashing down to the ground. The entire auditorium fell silent. Mary's prediction had come true. Allie had lost. I was amazed that Mary had been right. I rushed out to the parking lot to call her and tell her the news. That's when I noticed a figure in a thick coat running away from the auditorium. I squinted, but I couldn't make out who it was in the darkness. I called Mary three times, but she declined my calls. I assumed she was in a session and went back inside. The next afternoon, the whole school gathered in the stands for the football game. It began like any other, but then something strange happened. The quarterback of the opposing team clutched his chest. He was clearly having difficulty breathing, but he was trying to fight through it. It didn't work for long. He was off the field within a few minutes. His replacement was brought in from the bench. The other team had no chance without their star player, and our team thrashed them. It was an easy victory, and Mary had been right again. While the whole school screamed with joy, I stared at the field in amazement. Could my mother have true powers to see through time? And if she could teach me her ways, would I be able to do this too? I called Mary to tell her about the contest and the game. She wasn't surprised. She laughed and said she was never wrong. I wanted to learn to do what she did, so the next day I reached the store early so I'd have time to ask her questions. Two people were shouting loudly in the front of the shop. They were Mary and Chris, the first client of hers I'd met. You predicted that my business would be ruined, the man yelled. And then you set my shop on fire to make it true. That is nonsense, Mary snapped. The man screamed that neighbors had seen someone outside his shop just minutes before the fire. Mary wore a creepy smile and said that she never predicted that his business would fail on its own. Then a large man appeared. He seemed to be a friend of Mary's. He threatened Chris until he finally fled. When Mary realized I'd seen the whole fight, she looked very displeased. Why are you here early? She asked me harshly. I didn't mean to interrupt, I said. After a pause, she relaxed. It's fine, some people just can't handle my gift, she said. I want to learn, I told her. All your predictions come true and I was hoping you could teach me how to do this. It's not something that can be taught, she said. There had to be some way that you knew about the game and the fashion contest. You somehow knew that guy's business would burn. How? I asked. She refused to answer. She said I wouldn't understand. I was disappointed, but I thought that was all there was to it. Until Monday, at school. Allie came to me during lunch. She said she wanted to show me something. She took me to a room where Brandon was waiting with a laptop. They played a video for me. This is the day of the game, Brandon said. That's the opposing team's bench. Look at what happens to the quarterback. The quarterback was drinking a sports drink. When he went to go warm up, someone sidled over to the bench. It was the same person I'd seen the night of the fashion contest, running away from the school. They wore the same trench coat and their face was mostly hidden by the collar. The person put something in the bottle. The quarterback is allergic to ginger, Brandon told me. He went into shock on the field. Someone basically poisoned him. I told Brandon I'd seen this person in the trench coat after the fashion contest too. That's when Allie played the next video for me. It was the same person walking into Allie's dressing room minutes before the performance. She broke my heel, Allie said as we watched the hunched figure handling Allie's shoes. I was sabotaged too. I was shocked, but I could see it was true. Both predictions Mary had made came true, but not all on their own. I remembered Chris, the man who accused Mary of burning down his shop. Could he have been right? I told them what I thought. Allie and Brandon told me to call the police, but I refused. There was no way to prove that it was Mary in these videos. If my mother was truly a fraud, more than that, a dangerous criminal, I had to find out myself. I went to work that day and pretended everything was normal. Mary went out that afternoon to get supplies, which is when I began a full search of her shop. If she was using some kind of trick to make her predictions seem right, there had to be some proof in her workspace. I was right. I found a secret trapdoor hidden under her carpet. I yanked that door open and stepped inside the dark basement. The moment I switched on the flashlight on my phone, I saw why Mary had kept this secret. Pictures and detailed information about all her clients covered the walls. 
So many intimate details about their lives were here, ready for Mary to use. There were even police files. She knew about every single parking ticket these clients had ever gotten. I went through the papers on the table and found a report on the opposing team's quarterback. The police had driven him to the hospital once due to an allergic reaction to ginger. I also found notes about the fashion contest and a detailed diagram of the layout of my school. This was so creepy. The last file I found was mine. It clearly showed my school test results along with pictures of me fighting with my parents at home and sitting by myself at school. Mary had clearly been stalking me long before I even knew she existed. Just as I was about to faint under the weight of what I just discovered, I heard Mary speak behind me. So you have found out the truth, she said. There was no way to hide what I'd found. I turned to confront her. You were stalking me? I gave you away. I can check up on you, she said. You gave Ginger to that quarterback? I asked. That's how you made sure we won? Yes, she admitted. It was easy to slip it into his drink. And Allie? I asked. A simple broken heel, she said. I wanted to weep now. This was my mother? Did you really set that guy's shop on fire? I asked her. You already knew the answer, she said with an evil grin. You won't get away with this, I told her. I have to report you. I have proof, and soon everyone will know what you've done. She literally cackled at me and rushed out of the basement. I do what I have to do to survive, she said from the top of the stairs. I always have. She slammed the trap door shut. I froze. Was I locked in? I rushed to the trap door and banged on it with all my strength. It didn't budge. I checked my phone for a signal but had nothing. I went back to banging on the door, feeling more and more frightened with every passing second. Why had Mary locked me in here? What was she going to do to me? Was she just going to leave me here to starve and die alone? That very thought terrified me so much that I screamed. I screamed and screamed, but no one heard me. I spent four days in that dark hole. During that time, the trapdoor only opened twice. Once when Mary threw in some candy bars and bottles of water. Before I could get up the stairs, it shut again. The water and scraps of food kept me alive until the door opened again four days later. It was the police! They pulled me out and I found my parents outside sobbing with relief. They hugged me tightly and wept as an officer updated me about the situation. Mary was gone. She'd packed up all her things and disappeared. Her con was up in this town, now that I knew the truth. The cops asked me to tell them how I met Mary and what I knew about her. I told them all the whole truth. My mother was crushed to hear that I'd been suffering alone. I cried at my foolishness, knowing now that I'd ignored my loving mother for a psychopath. The police officers asked my parents for my adoption papers so that they could get more details on Mary. We were all shocked when we learned that Mary had given up 10 babies for adoption in the past 15 years. She had done this under various fake names. 10 babies in 15 years? These numbers were ridiculous. If they were true, that meant I had 10 siblings out there somewhere. I wanted to track them down and this time my parents helped me. We found one of my half-sisters, Elaine. She said she knew Mary. She'd met Mary. And then Mary had broken into her house, robbed her parents, and skipped town. I was horrified by this, but the true shock was yet to come. Elaine told me that after Mary disappeared, her parents had gotten a DNA test done. She just couldn't accept that she was related to that psycho. The test came back negative. Mary wasn't her mother. And chances were, she wasn't my mother either. They supposed it was just another one of Mary's cons. My head began to spin. Was it possible that I wasn't related to Mary at all? We did a DNA test again with some of Mary's hair found in the shop. It came back negative. Mary and I weren't related in any way. I was so relieved to learn I wasn't related to that psychopath. News of Mary kidnapping me had spread like wildfire through my school. People were a lot kinder to me now that my family struggles were known. Everyone was curious about my psycho fake mother, and while I enjoyed their attention, I still had a question in my heart. If Mary wasn't my mother, then who was? My parents helped me search, and it took them several months to find Ruth, a woman who'd given birth to a baby girl in the area where I was born, on the same day. The moment I saw Ruth, I knew I'd found her. We had the same green eyes, the same square jaw. This was my mother. My parents introduced themselves and told Ruth who I was. She was very confused. She said that her baby girl had disappeared soon after the birth. My parents asked her if she'd ever seen the baby. Tearfully, Ruth said no. 
When we showed Ruth a picture of Mary, she recognized her instantly. She said that Mary was the nurse who'd informed her that the baby had been stolen from the hospital. My stomach sank. That baby was me. Mary had been disguising herself as a nurse in small town hospitals and stealing people's babies. Then she put up these babies for adoption under her own phony names. She waited, and when the children got older and came looking for her, she took them for everything she could get. A federal investigation was launched against Mary, and they found her three years later, working in a senior's home where she was stealing from the elderly. All three of my parents and I testified against this monster. Today marks the five-year anniversary of Mary's imprisonment. While I hated my psycho-fake mom for what she did to me, I am in love with the life I have today. I have three loving parents and a very cool story to tell.